Have you ever taken a DNA test and been surprised to see Jewish ancestry pop up on your results? At first glance, it sounds strange. After all, Judaism is a religion, not a race. So how could something based on faith appear in your genetic code? You don't see Christian, Muslim, or Hindu showing up in DNA results, so why Jewish? Well, that's where the story takes a fascinating and at times shocking turn. Because the reason Jewish ancestry shows up in genetics has very little to do with religion and everything to do with history, migration, isolation, and survival. Today, scientists can actually trace the footprints of the Jewish people not just through scriptures or artifacts, but through the double helix of human DNA itself. And what they found has rewritten parts of history. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell, because what we're about to uncover may completely change how you think about ancestry and about what it truly means to belong to a people. Let's go back to the very beginning, to the ancient lands of the Middle East, where this entire genetic journey began. To understand how Jewish DNA became distinct, we have to go back nearly 4,000 years. According to tradition, it all begins with Abraham, a man who lived somewhere in ancient Mesopotamia, near modern-day Iraq. Around 1800 BCE, Abraham and his family are said to have migrated westward to Canaan, the land that would later become Israel and Palestine. At that time, there was no genetic boundary separating Israelites from their neighbors. They were part of a wider group of Semitic-speaking peoples, closely related to Canaanites, Phoenicians, Arameans, and other tribes scattered across the Levant. What made them unique wasn't their DNA, but a new and radical belief, monotheism, the worship of one God. Over the centuries, these early Israelites developed their own laws, language, and identity. They established kingdoms, first Israel, then Judah, with Jerusalem as their spiritual center. But by 586 BCE, everything changed. The Babylonians conquered Judah, destroyed the first temple, and carried thousands of its people into exile. That event, the Babylonian exile, would mark the first of many Jewish diasporas, setting a pattern of dispersion and resilience that would shape Jewish genetics for millennia. When some exiles eventually returned to Jerusalem under Persian rule, Jewish leaders introduced new social laws designed to preserve their identity. Among them was a strong emphasis on endogamy, marrying within the community. This practice wasn't about genetics at the time. It was about faith, unity, and survival. But unknowingly, it planted the seeds for a distinct genetic signature that scientists can now identify thousands of years later. Then came the Greek and Roman empires. In 70 CE, the Second Temple was destroyed by the Romans, scattering Jewish communities across the Mediterranean, North Africa, and Europe. This dispersal, known as the diaspora, forced Jews into small, tightly-knit communities that often lived in isolation. Over generations, this isolation preserved certain genetic lineages, and that's why even though Jewish communities lived on different continents, they still share deep ancestral links that trace straight back to the ancient Levant. Over the next 2,000 years, three major Jewish populations took shape. Mizrahi Jews, Sephardic Jews, and Ashkenazi Jews, each carrying unique stories written into their DNA. Mizrahi Jews, meaning Eastern, remained in the Middle East and North Africa. Their DNA shows the strongest continuity with the ancient Israelites, with relatively little mixture from outside groups. Populations from Iraq, Iran, and Yemen fit into this branch. Communities that held on to their Levantine ancestry for centuries, even as empires rose and fell around them. Sephardic Jews settled around the Mediterranean, especially in Spain and Portugal. For centuries they flourished, until the Spanish Inquisition and the 1492 expulsion forced them to scatter across the Ottoman Empire, North Africa, and Southern Europe. Genetic studies reveal that Sephardic Jews maintain a strong Middle Eastern core, blended with traces of North African Berber and Mediterranean ancestry, 
a living record of their journeys and the lands that sheltered them. And then there are the Ashkenazi Jews, perhaps the most genetically studied group in the world. They emerged in northern Europe, particularly in France and Germany around 900 to 1000 CE, before spreading into Eastern Europe. Here, history took a unique genetic turn. When a small group forms a new community, their genetic diversity is limited to the few people who start it. This is called a founder effect. Combine that with repeated cycles of persecution, disease, and migration, and you get a genetic bottleneck, where only a fraction of the population's genes survive to the next generation. Ashkenazi Jews experienced both. Historical isolation meant that generations often married within the same extended families, reinforcing certain genetic traits. This is why scientists today can clearly identify Ashkenazi ancestry in DNA tests. Their Y chromosome, inherited from fathers, shows deep continuity with ancient Middle Eastern lineages, particularly haplogroups J1 and J2. But on the maternal side, something unexpected appeared. Genetic studies reveal that many Ashkenazi maternal lineages trace back to European women who joined the community through conversion early in its history. In other words, Ashkenazi Jews are both Middle Eastern and European in ancestry, a fusion of migration and adaptation. This doesn't diminish their Jewish roots. It tells a story of growth, inclusion, and survival through connection rather than purity. Over time, genetic isolation led to certain health patterns that persist to this day. Because small populations can amplify rare mutations, several inherited diseases became more common among Ashkenazi Jews, including Tay-Sachs disease, Gaucher's disease, and certain BRCA-related cancers. Sephardic and Mizrahi Jews have their own regional patterns, such as familial Mediterranean fever. These shared mutations aren't just medical curiosities, they're evolutionary markers that help scientists trace lineages and reconstruct how ancient populations moved and mingled. It's a reminder that every genome carries both the triumphs and tragedies of history. While the three main branches dominate Jewish genetics, there are several fascinating outliers, communities that preserve Judaism far from its ancient heartland. The Beta Israel of Ethiopia, for example, practiced Judaism for centuries in relative isolation. Their DNA shows strong connections to local Ethiopian populations, but with faint traces of Middle Eastern ancestry, suggesting an ancient link through trade or migration. The Beni Israel of India tell a similar story. Their genetic makeup is primarily Indian, but scientists found clear signatures of Middle Eastern ancestry possibly from Jewish merchants who settled on India's western coast over a thousand years ago. And then there are the Kaifeng Jews of China, descendants of Persian Jewish traders along the Silk Road. Over time, intermarriage made them genetically indistinguishable from their Chinese neighbors, even as they maintained their faith and customs for generations. These communities prove something remarkable. Jewish identity has never been confined by borders, race, or genetics, but by memory, faith, and continuity. In recent years, scientists have begun comparing ancient DNA extracted from archaeological remains in the Levant with the genomes of modern Jews. The results are stunning. Despite thousands of years of migration, conversion, and exile, the genetic continuity between ancient Israelites and modern Jewish communities remains unmistakable. Studies published in major genetics journals consistently show that Jewish populations, whether in Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East, share a common Middle Eastern origin. Even the most isolated groups retain these genetic threads that tie them back to the same ancestral homeland. It's a living link that stretches across 3,000 years, one that no empire, exile, or persecution could erase. So what does it really mean when your DNA test says you have Jewish ancestry? It doesn't mean your genes believe in Judaism. It means that parts of your genome resemble those of a people who, through extraordinary endurance and cultural preservation, 
carried their identity through time itself. For the Jewish people, genetics only tells one side of the story. The other side is one of tradition, resilience, and shared memory, of families preserving prayers, songs, and customs that outlasted the fall of kingdoms. Jewish BNA doesn't define who is or isn't Jewish. Instead, it reveals a story, a scientific echo of one of humanity's longest and most enduring journeys. In the end, the Jewish DNA story is far more than a scientific curiosity. It's a reminder that identity can survive exile, persecution, and even the passage of millennia. From the sands of Babylon to the streets of New York, from the hills of Yemen to the synagogues of Poland, the DNA of the Jewish people carries whispers of an ancient world, of a people who refused to forget where they came from. So when you open your DNA report and see Jewish ancestry, remember, it's not just data. It's the biological record of faith, migration, and resilience that has endured for over 3,000 years. If this deep dive into the science and history of Jewish DNA fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Because the story of humanity, your story, my story, is written in our cells. And every strand of DNA is a chapter waiting to be told.